Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our 10th from how we got here, sustainability. That's great. Glad to have you. How's everyone coming in this morning? Coming in good? Feeling great? You'll notice that we have a different person sitting next to me. Uh, Yara is I'm going to make it safe. We're graciously uh, have the presence of ASBN Steering Committee Chair Ken. Thanks for coming along, Ken. Appreciate your time coming along today. Thanks for having me along, Tyler, and also to the rest of the rest of the community. It'll be an excellent one today, as always. We are graced to have the, the partnership and presence of uh, the Carbon Neutral Adelaide team uh, this, this morning represented by uh, Rebecca Short. But before we get into that, though, Ken, acknowledge the country, please. Yep. Um, yeah, we would like to acknowledge that our event is held today uh, on Tandanya, the traditional lands of the Ghana people. Um, we pay our respects to past, present and emerging um, we also want to make sure that we pay our respects to our um, bordering Indigenous uh, communities as well, with the Pamarank Nation to the uh, Adelaide Hills, the Naranjiri down south, um, and up north, the Naranga, Nukanu, and Nadri people. Um, we think it's really important that uh, in, our, in our locale that we continue to acknowledge um, the various uh, traditional owners of the land who's been on South Australia for uh, quite some time and provide a lot of uh, inspiration. Um, so uh, so in, in that, um, we also want to make sure that we also to, uh, allow ourselves to maybe take on that ethic and um, stewardship to land as well, which I'm pretty sure is a key component to uh, carbon neutral Adelaide's um, ethics. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you, Ken. I'm sure it is too. Fantastic. All right. So for us to get cracking this morning, as I said, we're joined by Rebecca Short from Carbon Neutral Adelaide. She is the Partnerships and Engagement Advisor in the City of Adelaide's Low Carbon Team. Rebecca manages the Carbon Neutral Adelaide Partner Program, which is a group of over 200 like-minded organisations committed to the vision of decarbonising Central Adelaide. With her environmental science qualifications, Rebecca's background is is in communications and outreach across a broad range of sustainability topics, including energy policy, renewable electricity, and green buildings. Rebecca has previously worked on projects for a number of major property and construction companies in LA, Sydney, and overseas, and, and we're very privileged to have her with us this morning. Uh, Rebecca, we'd like to uh, invite you in, maybe say hello, and um, you know, uh, get us going with your presentation. G'day. Hi, Ken, and thanks for having me. And um, you're right, this is, um, we, we were really happy to have the opportunity to tap into the ASBN network because here at City of Adelaide, um, we're in a phase of consultation. So before the end of this, we'll um, circulate the link that you can use to, to be part of that. Um, also, my team members, uh, Lara Dado and Megan Shartner are here. Um, so they're also all ears as well. Um, I'm going to just share my the first bit of my presentation. Well, I've got about 10 minutes worth of presentation, which is a bit of status of where we're at and what we're doing. I'll try to be pretty swift with that. Um, so I'll pop that up now. So uh, Carbon Neutral Adelaide, as you may know, is a program. It was jointly launched by the state government and the city council in 2016, but it actually falls under a broader 10-year strategy by the council who in, in late 2015 went um, and were showcased at the um, Climate International Convention of the Parties, the UN climate meeting, and at the Paris Agreement one in 2015, as an example of a subnational government taking um, climate action and setting targets quite early on in the piece. So Carbon Neutral Adelaide has a five year span, which has now run out, but the council is still under its 10 year umbrella. So we're looking at the next three years because many of the things in that um, council uh, strategy have been have happened. And the ones that haven't happened are um, remain challenges in the community. So the team is out um, all ears at the moment. And then we'll be, we're actually speaking to our elected members in this early phase, and then we'll be moving to a, a short-term action plan, but with an eye on some the longer-term goals as well. 
Um, hopefully, I think with the Sustainable Building Network, I don't really have to spend a lot of time on the science of climate change. You're probably all hyper aware that the IPCC report summary to policymakers came out yesterday. Um, those re It's number six, um, AR assessment report six. They've been going since the a couple of decades now. They're getting more and more serious. Um, my colleague, Andrea, is our um, climate specialist who couldn't be here today. Um, she is, um, this is her graphic, with some of the key sort of top line pieces of science. Um, the picture underneath are uh, showing every single year as a little dial and each segment on the dial is a month. So that's average temperatures um, going through to today. Um, we've got down the bottom there, we've got um, Adelaide's current projections from the Bureau of Meteorology is the increase in days over 35 degrees to, to 34 days over 35 in 2050 and 51 days in 21, 2090, um, an average increase across all seasons. And the days over 40 are going up as well there um, quite significantly. So you're looking at a um, significant part of the year, extreme temperatures. Um, the council, uh, you are probably fairly familiar with some of these programs. This is a bit of just a um, highlight summary of the things we've been doing. The council put a fair bit of focus on, on its own footprint. Um, you can see, so we were certified carbon neutral as an operation in financial year 20 and 21. Um, that uh, we dropped our measurable emissions in half with a um, 100% renewable energy contract, electricity contract, PPA, um, and some of those other things and some of the actions that we try to do are then outward facing into the community, um, including the part, the Carbon Neutral Partner Program, which ASBN is a member of, and I think perhaps some of the people on the call might be as well. Um, so that's just a bit of a bit of a splash on what we've been doing. The, oh, the resource recycling strategy is um, an eight year plan as well. And that's pretty serious about making a, as big a shift to green waste, um, getting a lot of things out of the red bin waste stream and into green waste. Um, Switching from the corporation of the city of Adelaide, which now is responsible for something like just under 12,000 tonnes of carbon dioxide a year, um, based on the accounting methods that we have in place. The community emission is this. This is it for the first year in 2020, um, again, according to the greenhouse protocols we use, dropped under a million tonnes of carbon dioxide. Um, it was so, this is the donut from a year ago. It's still um, stationary energy is on the decline due to the grid going green. Um, so all those red ones are related to electricity and gas. The blue and purple ones are all related to transport. And then you've got refrigerants. We In the greenhouse methods, just by the way, they often call products product use, but it, it really is means it, it's a it's a downscaling of the product use of refrigerants nationally to the Adelaide scale. And then you've got your waste, um, commercial waste there and 8%. Um, this is what has happened between 2007 and 2020. Um, the methodology, when an update gets made to the methodology, it does get backcast. So um, things have been added, like aviation has been added, it didn't used to be measured back in 2014, 15, around, well, back then. Um, so you can see the most notable thing about this is that red bar shrinking. Um, I've put a little link in the bottom here. So we have this on the website and it's actually a lot of detail on the City of Adelaide website. You can click on each of these bars and drill down into what makes them up. So um, if you're a data head, you might enjoy having a look at that. Um, and you can see it, each, each one of these is split up by its component parts. Um, Oh, there we go. We in our and other things that are related to what we're doing in the climate space is the council put together a risk assessment um, a, one to two years ago um, based on the TCFD reporting. Um, and that ran through uh, looking at a warmed world and looking at the scenarios for climate change, what the risks would be mostly from an operational perspective, and then made a plan about that. So some of those are embedded now into the asset management um, that we do at council. So they're, they're thinking about things like if you get extreme heat in the mall, for example, 
or if you have flooding in some of our parks and gardens. So those kinds of um, risk analysis and adaptation. And just to, this might be of interest to your group, especially the planners um, or urban designers amongst you, there is going to be a city plan developed during the second half of 2022. Um, so that'll have a, a consultation component and that will look at increasing densities and housing development in the city and it will have community and stakeholder involvement um, and they'll be looking to think about all those overlays and all those combined issues um, for livability in the city. So if you are like to be involved in that kind of thing, there'll probably be a your say that'll come out that you can register and you can keep get all the updates and, and get involved. Um, and that will that will... The work we're doing now will be also handed to the planning team who've come to some of these consultations as well. So um, last year we had some modelling done on the emissions going forward, so starting now at 2020 and going to 2030 and 2050, um, which are all going in a downwards direction based on the current um, policies by state and federal government. But then um, the modellers put together a whole lot of opportunities that would assist with a greater and a more accelerated emission reduction because the what you want is that trajectory to come down steeper. So in my head, I call it steepening the curve because um, we are so familiar with flattening the curve with COVID, but I, that hasn't caught on in climate circles yet. But um, basically this is a long list of things that would contribute to emissions going down more quickly than they are with current business as usual policies. Um, and then of those, you can see, you know, the, the city council can't make everything happen. The city council has limited um, control or limited roles in different areas of the way the city runs. You know, we, we, can't, we can't compel a private sector to, you know, to make a, an upgrade. Um, so acknowledging those different roles that we might play, which um, what we did is, is took a top five. So the underlines that are coming up now are top five. Um, which we put on the consultation and put out to our communities to, to feed back on these kinds of opportunities um, and the kinds of things maybe they are already doing or the things they might like to do or the, whether there's where their support and energy is directed already. Um, so the next slides are simply, of those five, one of them is very relevant to the building sector, which is this trend, this increasing trend of electrifying everything. So as you would all know, the South Australian grid is one of the greenest. It's going more than 60% renewables. Um, as that happens, I mean, we're a leader, my understanding is of a city, a one gigawatt grid scale or a, over a million people in the city. We're pretty unique in the world, the way we run on wind and solar. So as that, there's a lot of challenges there, but um, one of the fastest ways to bring your emissions down further is to, to put everything onto that grid and including electric vehicles. So we've got a bit of detail on that slide of, you know, if you think about what a council can do, you know, it can do market research, it can educate, it can create incentives, things like that. Um, the other four of those opportunity areas, I've just put on one slide together because um, in the interests of time, but um, some of these sort of bigger or more manageable opportunities are in um, obviously, um, active transport, so getting people out of private cars. Um, then shared solar is an emerging area where apartments and uh, multi-occupancy commercial buildings get more solar that goes into all the dwellings. Um, and then electric more electric vehicles and um, group buying renewables off the grid are for other opportunities. Uh, yeah, Rebecca and also Laura, thank you so much for your time. Um, Showcase and telling us what the city of Adelaide is up to, where you guys want to go, and also leaving the door open for all of us to um, uh, feed back into uh, how we can continue to be part of improving, improving the outcomes in our capital city. I really appreciate everyone's time and coming along and to, to join our 10th sustainability with double figures today. So appreciate everyone's time this morning um, and, and particularly to yeah, uh, the Carbon Neutral LA team uh, as well as our ASBN community. So thank you guys.